There you go. Sorry, that was tasteless and racist. Um, <laughs> Louis C.K. special uh, and the controversy you were about to, to go ahead. Yeah, I think it's a hilarious special. Uh, it's on on the heels of like Bill Burr and um, Chappelle. Uh, Dave Chappelle came out with uh, one, and now Louis comes out with one, and all of the woke people are so upset about this thing. Not only is the material uh, very politically incorrect, he dares use the R word oh. in it. It's just uh, recidivism, it's mental, if I may say. Uh, yeah, and, and and what what you're getting is what most people find hilariously funny right. from a guy that did nothing, in my opinion. He asked permission to you know do something uh, in front of uh, a couple of girls that was. All right, a little odd, a little weird, but... <laughs> Nothing I haven't done on the bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah see? Dave should be held liable for yeah. uh, for that. But it's... it's it, it was it's like, cha- it was where- like the real-life version of chat roulette. And it's creepy, right. and it's gross, but let's not compare it to Roman Polanski or Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. Right, or Bill Cosby or a number of other people that True. are absolute uh, actual rapists. Harvey yeah. Weinstein, all messed up though. He's got the corona. It's like Winnie the Jew. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> yeah. But I, uh, I, as a comic, the way that I watch it too is what they hate about him is he's able to survive without them. Not, not only right. survive, but be a multi-millionaire without them. Yeah. And when you watch the special, he was so heavily criticized for stuff he was saying about shootings and everything. Yeah, you can tell that when he put the special out, it was deliberately meant to just offend all the people that had had been bothering him for right. two years. And that's what I loved. It was a great one-hour middle finger to everyone. Yeah, because yeah, he he doesn't care. He's self-sufficient, and uh, now you're getting people though that say he shouldn't he shouldn't have a career. He shouldn't be allowed to do this. Anyone that downloaded his special is is culpable in 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 rape shaming, and it it's yeah. so ridiculous. And I hope that that our priorities change after this whole thing. I doubt it will, but yeah. it would be nice if our priorities change. We didn't hear so much yeah. about all the garbage and nonsense that was eating up the news and our personal lives and people yeah. being canceled for just ridiculous stuff. You know, they're, yeah. they're bitching about Louis C.K.'s special that's self-produced and released. I don't hear anyone calling for an embargo on Margaret Cho coming in at this point, and that's a national security issue at this point. Uh, yeah. You know, Thank you. we get it. Your we- mom has an accent. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I like, never saw. Not, yeah, I never now. saw her do that in her act where she does an impression that if anyone else did it, they would be exiled. To it's very <laughs> similar to like the old uh, impressionist, like Rich, you know, Rich Little. Like uh, this is what I imagine it would be like if uh, you know Ronald Reagan chopped a zucchini. You know, anything you want to watch Margaret Cho special? It's like, do you know how my mom would react to coronavirus? Then no Corona. You my daughter. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, 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 oh. she is dat fam times two. <laughs> Um, that was a great impression, by the way. I, <laughs> I've worked on my Cho. <laughs> what was that, Dave? That is a great Margaret Cho. I know. I know. I just, you know, I, and I just, I don't know. I can't, uh, I can't control it. I don't know yeah. what's going to happen next. <laughs> it's Margaret it's so like random. It. You know, it's like Robin Williams. It's random, but it's actually all pre-written at the same set. Um, so hey, let do, me- you, do you think uh, when, when this... Um, <laughs> When this antibody test comes out, we're going to find out that a hell of a lot of people have already gone through uh, corona. Well, this is interesting to me because they don't want to find a silver lining in anything. And again, not to diminish the the, the virus, uh, of course, and I think if nothing else, this has taught us where we have our weak spots in certain global organizations that shouldn't be trusted, like the World Health Organization, if you see what they've done with Taiwan. So there could be a silver lining politically, obviously, but as far as Chloroquine. They don't want to acknowledge that. Uh, when they say, oh my gosh, it turns out that uh, over 25% of people have corona are asymptomatic and 80 something percent have very mild symptoms. I go, well, oh, okay. So so there's some, and that means that they could be carrying it to other people who, well, okay. It means, <laughs> means that 90% of people could be carrying it to the 10% who have more than the sniffles, but isn't it a good thing? Like you don't shut down the entire global economy through summer. I want the mayor from Amityville, from Jaws to come out and tell them that he's not closing down New York for the 4th of July weekend. <laughs> he's the guy, right? Those beaches will be open. <laughs> it's the 4th of July. Right. A 91-year-old woman from Jaws just died from <laughs> coronavirus. She died oh, from corona. oh well, no, not another celebrity that nobody cares about. 
That, that and the Fountains Wayne of Wayne, Wayne singer, the Stacy's <laughs> mom guy. Call me when Paul Simon gets Corona. I'm sorry. At a certain point, it's like. Richard <laughs> Dreyfus looked young in that movie. She should be dead. She was 91 years old. Where the heck are those beaches? Will be open. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She was women. I want that corona that coronavirus found and hung up by its Buster Brown. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna need a bigger vaccine. What? There is no vaccine. No. Oh, okay. No. No vaccine. No nothing. But like you said, good news be damned. They cannot. They cannot have good news. And I've been reading uh, tweets from all the networks. Yeah. And they pump out. And you read all of their horse crap. Uh, one one that I saw was like uh, they talked to over a half dozen uh, doctors about something. It's like that's seven. Yeah. You talk to seven. <laughs> I know. But they heard it like over a half dozen. If it was eight, they would have said eight to make right. it more. And then they but say in plural. And half then they say dozen. seven. <laughs> But seven people. And then they say and, and there's zero evidence for chloroquine out there. Well, no, there are hundreds of people involved uh. across multiple clinical studies. And by the way, 6,000 doctors signed a forum saying it's the most effective treatment right now. Wolf Blitzer spoke with seven people who, by the way, were <laughs> nurses in doctor's uniform, which is a problem, like yeah. we've talked about. I, I don't like that at all. I don't like when they were people, male nurse practitioners. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like when the male nurses get in front of the camera and talk like a doctor. Now look, I know nurses, look, I'll preface it like you just did before. <laughs> I know they are heroes. They are, 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 are some of the smartest, but I hear, by the way, that the nurses are the ones that actually do the surgeries. Yes, the doctors absolutely. The, back, the NYPD bodies. should get on their knees for male nurse practitioners. Absolutely, right, yes. Exactly, they're the important people that, right. that save uh, lives. Some yes. literally the, the guys that actually went to medical school for umpteen years, uh, they're not the heroes. No. It's somebody that went to, um, I don't know. Phoenix Online. Phoenix Online or the, the Grand Canyon U. Uh, <laughs> Whatever thing plays during Maury and a guy yells at you for not going to a crappy college. Right. Apex Tech. You get a free stethoscope upon your graduation. Right. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know what we were talking about. Okay, let's go back to the com. Were you? Did you have a point? Did we, one of us have a point about this before you got? You said you were going to preface it, and then you just insulted. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to preface the uh, the doctor and nurse thing. Um, yeah, from what I'm hearing, uh, it, it there aren't as many patients in a lot of these hospitals they've set up. They've set them up in Central Park here in, in New York City, right. and the, we have the hospital ship, and we have the Javits Center. And uh, it was supposed to be all these were supposed to be overflow. We haven't seen any video like we were seeing from China. What happened in China where people were just collapsing in the street and mm -hmm. convulsing? Yeah. What happened uh, like in China where people are being dragged into vehicles and driven off to God knows no, where? Those were the whistleblowers and the convulsing was from the dart gun. <laughs> Yes, that's, that's what I think, the cattle prod. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those situations where this is like anything else. Yeah, when they did the news, uh, when they do the news and a blizzard is coming, they go, oh boy, this is going to be the blizzard of the century. It's going to be the worst storm ever. And as it approaches, you'll see they go, well, um, we, our, our models are showing us that the snowfall won't be as great, but the wind and everything, it's going to be a blizzard. It's going to be crazy. And then when, when uh, zero hour comes, they go, we sure dodged that bullet, didn't we? Right. Thank God. Right. And the last thing they want is a dodged bullet. They right. hate dodging bullets. They right. want catastrophe. They want the bullet and, ripping through your head. Oh, yeah, right yeah. through you. And that's what this is. They, they made this the big zombie movie monster thing that everyone was afraid of. And it's going to turn out to be... Like the flu, people die, people get sick. Well, it's to be terrible. fair, I think it's, it's think it, it, here's the thing, for people who are compromised, it definitely is more severe than the flu. But I said this a long time ago, I said, of course, how, how about we quarantine older people, people who are vulnerable? So here at the office, you know, this has been, I won't lie, this has been a rough uh, couple weeks for me because we're at, we've actually doubled shows who so are doing morning and, mm -hmm. uh, and night shows because we wanted to give people more content out there. I know they're getting a little bit stir crazy. Um, my mother, who, you know, she actually did the, the costumes for Just for Laughs for about a decade. So she's our costume person here um, and she has pneumonia. So what we did was we said, you go. Don't, we'll have uh, just sort of a pe someone here help us with wardrobe, and uh, we make sure that I don't go anywhere near my dad. So we just, so that's what we've, do we've done, and everyone else who's young and healthy, no symptoms, if you're working in close proximity, we wear masks, we disinfect. Not saying no one here will get sick, but everyone's been fine, 
and yeah. everyone still has gainful employment, which we had a conversation here. People said there's an acceptable risk and we would like to work. So there yep. does, it, but that, it, it, there is the same approach being taken kind of like if you say, you know what, listen, I believe that there's uh, climate change. I believe that that has occurred. I believe that maybe humans are uh, contributing to it. I don't know the severity and I don't think that these policies will change it politically and people act as though you're a science denier. Even if you say <laughs> yeah. the virus is real, I think we need to take precautions. I just don't think that right now this is a balanced approach. They, they just lambast you as anti-science. You have to be on either end of the spectrum. You can't be anywhere in the middle. You have to be, this is the worst thing, everyone in the world is gonna die, or on the other end saying, we should just run around coughing in each other's faces. Uh, <laughs> anywhere in the middle and you're denying some someone's opinion of science. Right. You should have a 13 year old girl come and tell us about it and then I would be more- uh, Right, with grades yeah. from a no Norwegian, um, start a from movement. some Nordic, Oh, uh, I, you know what's so funny? I'm so tired. I had forgotten the reference to Greta. I was thinking you were going to She's like gone. to capture Joe Biden's attention because he's a pedophile. Oh, oh yeah. that too. Well, he would love to sniff her brains. Either way, I'd put that on a hook if I wanted to meet him. <laughs> just, just, a, just the yeah. Muppet cane. Na -na -na -na, na -na -na -na, pull her out and then just, just, just Joe like, uh, what, like Yogi Bear with a picnic basket pie. Just. <laughs> yeah, he can't resist. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, <laughs> to run on the treadmill. They just put a dangle of child right in front of them. <laughs> hey, you're talking about the presumptive de Democratic nominee for the presidency right That's there. That's okay. Oh, yeah. Even if he saw this, he wouldn't understand. Final question. Um, what, so, so obviously you're in a little bit of a different set here. You two are, are roomies right now, so that's cute. Yeah. Um, how are you spending your time during the, the quarantine? How has it changed how you guys do your show? It's uh, really something, as far as I'm concerned, uh, it hasn't changed much for me. I don't go into the city, so I'm not taking the train in and walking through the, the Petri dish that is Penn Station and uh, going into the studio. Right. So it's a couple of hours here every day. But after that, my life has not really changed much because all I did was come home. I'd watch some TV. I'd play some video games. I'd you know talk with my girl. We'd hang out, uh, pet the cats. But go in the pool. I have the pool fired up, ready to go. Nice. Uh, but but other than that, like, I don't normally go out. Here's the one thing I do miss, uh, going out to dinner. Like, I yeah, like yeah. going out to restaurants, having a nice wine and a nice filet mignon. And, bat like, soup. that was bat soup, right? <laughs> some, <laughs> some living pinky mice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Here's the thing. Fish. People will be more offended at what you said just there. We're, none of us do it. Right. It's an yeah. entire country that does it. They look the dog in they the eye it. while eating it alive. The first, like, that is nothing compared to when they try and trace the sociopathic behavior of Jeffrey Dahmer. Like, before he raped men and eat them, ooh, he put ants under a magnifying glass. He didn't boil dogs alive. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Sorry. I was he racist. Put the whole thing in a pan. Like, it doesn't even make sense. It's so bad. It's so bad. It still has the Westminster ribbon on it. <laughs> it's so, it's uh, so bad. Uh, what's that, the but sporting got, group? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, doing the show, I, I like it much better like this uh, uh, than, than doing the, the Skype all the time. Right. Between a, a host and a co-host, Skype, it's a little awkward. We have the guys in the city doing the show in the studio uh, that live in the city. They're able to get there and, and do the show there. So we're pretty much up and running with all of our programming being live. Because, yeah. uh, like you said, people are clamoring for something. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's there's not much out there. We've just been experimenting. Uh, this morning we did uh, an entire broadcast of just, uh, I have a dog that's obsessed with toilet paper, a, a big old, she looks like a Great Dane with a, a pit bull had a baby. It's called a Doug Argentino. And we just did a 30 minute broadcast. We set up a tower of toilet paper, like a champagne tower, and just let her destroy it for a half hour. <laughs> and uh, provide like golf commentary. And it pissed off <laughs> awesome. more people than anything else we've ever done due to the toilet paper shortage. Of course. So, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh, that's terrible. You could have donated it. Shut up. But you know what? I can't save everyone, but I can make one dog's day. And that's what I did. 
Um, that's great. You're not going to the city. That's almost like a reverse Warriors. You know, they had to make their way out to Coney while avoiding the baseball furies, but you're like trying to make your way into Manhattan, avoiding the microbes and, you know, just yeah. face palming yeah. a bunch of Asians and masks. Yeah, um, I'd rather uh, have to make my way here in Roslyn, Long Island to the liquor store. Yes. Uh, which, which put in a window. The, my liquor store put in a, a window with a little buzzer, and you, the transaction happens okay. separately through a window. You stand outside. Uh, so I, I really appreciate that because alcohol has pretty much been the savior during this whole thing. Yeah. Whether you're rubbing it into your hands or pouring it into your liver, um, <laughs> alcohol true. and corona are like peas and carrots. It, you, know, you can start drinking the sanitizer. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? like, like uh, what's her name? Dukakis. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, well, you know what I did? And then we do it. We do actually have to go. I could talk with you guys all day. And Anthony, I owe you an appearance on your show, by the way. You just so happened to ask when we started doubling the show oh, content. Good, but I get you. right after uh, I had heard about. So I, I'm not a doomsday prepper, but I've always I, I always I have 30 days of food, like dehydrated food. Uh, I always have some water. And another thing that I always have people talk about your sort of bug out bag. I always have at least a couple bottles of Everclear. And the reason why is if something really goes down, it's you know, you can drink it. It's a trading commodity. It's also not toxic and if you dilute it enough it has to be diluted enough it can be a sanitizer well the cdc yeah. came out and said don't make hand sanitizer out of any homemade liquors and by name they listed everclear mm -hmm. and said because uh it's not effective enough unless it's 60 percent i'm going my everclear is 92 percent alcohol i have yeah. to dilute it and then a week later they go i guess everclear can work if you uh, want to waste the money i didn't ask you to manage my finances it's actually <laughs> cheaper than sanitizer i asked you if everclear would work in a pandemic to sanitize so if people out there, because now I've stocked up, have uh, if, if you want one item that saves space, you can also use it for fu a fuel, uh, right. uh, an alcohol burning stove. Right. Yeah. Everclear is the best option you have, and no one thought of it in the first few weeks. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, I have my go bag uh, all all loaded up, ready to go. A yep. couple of a uh, couple of rifles strategically placed around the house, and. Uh, you know, all ready to go here on uh, beautiful Nassau County, Long Island. And I'm germaphobic, so I already had all that stuff. I had masks. I was already ready, and now I'm staying with him, so if I need a gun, they're everywhere. <laughs> nice. Perfect. Uh, and then if one of you runs out of masks, uh, we'll have some tryouts. Okay. It is the Kumia Show. Uh, Anthony Kumia, uh, compoundmedia.com. Uh, if they enter in the promo code COMPOUND20, right? That's the 20% off? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, 20% off. Thanks, Thank man. You. Thank uh, you, guys. Appreciate it. And we're doing so much more uh, content now. If you're up early, we do the Good Morning Mug Club. Uh, I'm sure we could have you on here sometime in the next month. Absolutely. I love what you're doing, man. You guys are so funny. And like I said, that that piece, and it's like other things you do. When you go to those, when you were going to the college campuses before all this crap started, right. uh, I love those things where you just sit down and people lose their minds over the fact that you just want to have a discussion. I can't get over those. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. And I, I still listen uh, I still listen to a lot of your stuff. Um, and by the way, hey, let Artie Lang know that we would love to have him on the show. Uh, I'm re I don't think I've ever been rooting for someone more. I don't think I – think, Oh, I know. I think I can say this now on air. I've only ever edited – two interviews in my life, okay? Because we often pre-tape based on time. One of them was a friend who will admit, just because he was so boring, but so sweet and meandering. <laughs> and the other one was Artie because now we can, he was uh, clearly high and yeah, he said some things time. that it didn't make yeah. sense and I thought could get him into a lot of trouble. So Four. I said, you know what? Let's cut that before air. Yeah. And uh, let his manager know. I don't think Artie would ever even remember because it was a really tumultuous period of his life. But I, I would love I to have him on. I understand completely. And say hi to Nick DiPaolo <laughs> for me uh, and his new TRT regimen. Don't think we're not oh, noticing, yeah. Nick. You and your goatee. It's awesome. <laughs> I love Nick, man. Let's, hey, Stephen, thanks so much. Thank you very much, Anthony. We appreciate it. And thank you, Dave. Thank you, guys. We'll have you back on soon. We're going to wrap this show up in a nice bow. Like the dog in your pants.